Hello, hello, friends. How are we doing? <laughs> Welcome to our last Summerween vlog. If you don't know, I've been doing vlogs for Summerween. I did a vlog for days one and two, a vlog for days three and four, and now we're doing a vlog for days five, six, and seven, and I'm excited. So far, we've read four books and a short story, which, like, guys, I think it's pretty great. <laughs> wow. So make sure you go check out those vlogs if you haven't seen them yet. But this is the closing off of Summerween and I want to end on a really high note. So I've got some books that I'm really excited. Let's chat through my plans, okay? I'm trying to be realistic. I feel like I'm, you know, I want to start doing some other stuff other than just reading. <laughs> I haven't played Cozy Grove since you saw me play it in day one. I still haven't finished Speak Now. I haven't listened to the vault tracks, guys. So we have to do that at some point. So I'm trying to be realistic with what I'm gonna get read in these three days. So if you've watched other vlogs, you know that I'm reading like a short story a day, kind of, of uh, Her Body and Other Parties. I think I've read the first four and I've got four left to read. So I'll try to read one today, but I'll probably just chat about this with you on the last day once I've read these last four maybe, or maybe I'll chat with you after every two. But I'm really enjoying this so far. I'd say my ratings of the short stories in this that we've had so far have been a five, a four, a three, and a five. It's very like surreal horror with like a little bit ugly. It's very like sensual, it's queer. There's a lot going on. <laughs> so I'd like to make progress on this. And then the two books that I'm aiming to get read are Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This is gonna fulfill my prompt, the only prompt I haven't fulfilled yet, which is read a book set in fall. Um, one of my patrons sent me an image, she was also reading this for Summerween, and she sent me an image where um, it says that this did, does take place in autumn, at least part of it, so it's what I'm counting. <laughs> this is a five star prediction for me, okay? It's about two eyes, one who's gone on this deep sea mission, and she comes back completely changed, and it's about their relationship. I read the first chapter of this as a contender for my first book of the year, and it narrowly missed out. Legends and Lattes, which is like, you know, stiff competition. <laughs> it's hard to match up to. So yeah, this is a five star prediction for me. I think I'm gonna love this. And then I also wanna get around to Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I just picked this up the other week and I just feel like I wanna read it straight away. You know, I love Grady Hendrix. He is definitely an author that I wanna read all of his backlist. I feel like in terms of horror, I'm a bit of a wimp, right? I'm watching everyone's Halloween videos <laughs> and some of the books people are reading. I'm like, that's past my limit. <laughs> <laughs> it's past my limit. I'm not a big horror girly. I like horror, I like dabbling, but I don't, I don't love super graphic stuff. So Grady Hendrix is more camp. I feel like he is my perfect horror author. Even though I've only given him one, I've only read one book from him and it's been a four star. I feel like we do have five stars, you know potential with him. So those are the books we're going to be reading in this vlog. Who knows if we'll read more. I may read these really fast. We do have three days left, but I'm trying to be realistic. It's not realistic. It's just not realistic. Now I was going to start Our Wives Under the Sea just so we could tick all the prompts off, but I'm going to be honest guys, I'm having a bit of a meh day. It's already like four o'clock. I've been working again this evening, this morning. It should have only taken me to like maybe one o'clock to do all my work, but it's taken me until almost four. It's like half past, it's more like half past three. I'm being harsh on myself, but <laughs> I'm just having a day where I'm just kind of like, I feel very sluggish and I feel very like, I don't know, the vibes aren't great, but we're gonna turn it around. Change, change that costume, costume change, change it, it around. around. We're gonna turn it around. So I was gonna start with that, but I feel like I need an audiobook, and I don't have the audiobook for this, but I do have it for Horror Store, and I have it for Her Body and Other Parties actually on Scribd. I feel like Scribd, I was talking to my patrons about this, guys. Yes, it does limit you, right, Scribd, if you don't know. I always have a link where you can get two months free if you want. In my description, I get a month free. Thank you to everyone who's ever used that because I now have Scribd for free until like 2060 or something. <laughs> so if you know anyone else who has a link, like a friend or whatever, I always tell my patrons like, ask if anyone else in the patron in the Discord has a link because use theirs instead of mine. <laughs> but um, I feel like Scribd selection has been really freaking good lately. Like I've been looking up some of the books on there, like it has yellow face, it has, I don't know, I can't remember all the other ones, but there were so many good books that have been added lately. Anyways, so I do have the audiobook for these. I think I'm gonna read Horror Store. This wasn't the plan, but I'm really excited. It's set in an Ikea, oh, the camp. Grady Hendrix, the camp, <laughs> I'm so excited. I think we're gonna start this. I think this is what we need. I'm gonna go ahead and read it and I'll chat with you maybe when I'm about halfway through. It's not very long, it's like 200 and 30, 240 pages. I'm just hoping for fun, for ridiculousness, like 
I think I'm gonna love this. So this is what we're gonna go for. And maybe we'll try and read this all today. I don't know. I do have reading sprints later with my patrons. So anyways, let's get into it. Let's have a great last days of the readathon. I'm very excited for the books that I've got in front of me. Let's go start this. <laughs> I'm halfway through Horror Store. This is such a quick read. Uh, the audiobook is definitely helping me stay focused and like have good vibes because <laughs> I just, you know, you need an audiobook to stay focused. I mean, I wouldn't recommend getting just the audiobook for this. I think it is free if you have Audible or at least in the UK, I think it's like one of those ones that's included in the catalogue and that's how I have it. But um, yeah, because so much of this is visual, I would really recommend getting it physically. So all you need to know about this is that it's set in like an Ikea ripoff <laughs> and strange things have been happening there. Things have been getting vandalized. The boss says to some of the, some of the workers there, like I need you to stay here tonight. I'll pay you double overtime. Stay here and we'll try and figure out who's doing this. And it's basically like a, it seems to be like a, haunted house story but in an Ikea <laughs> essentially and I'm enjoying it I'd say at the moment it's like a 3.5 but I'd round it up to a 4 kind of situation because here's the thing I'm enjoying this I don't have any problems with it but I'm not like enamored with it I'm not reading it and I'm like oh my god you know I think it's good I think it's fun I love a book that does something different some of my favorite parts are the bits at the beginning with like a map and like telling you about the catalog and like the fucking home delivery form that's the kind of shit I love you guys are so weird oh my god you guys are so weird I know everything is weird I wish I'd actually been a bit more of that other than just at the start of every chapter there being like uh, piece of furniture. I think the writing is good. I just think I'm not gonna love this as much as maybe Final Girl Support Group and as much as I would, you know, the ones that I really think I will love from Grady Hendrix are probably Southern Book Club's Guide, Best Friends Exorcism, How to Sell a Haunted House. They're ones that I probably had higher like rating anticipation of. I was just excited to read this because I think it's a fun twist on the genre and I love something that's a bit different. That's more why I was excited to read this. I think the characters are fine. I think it's probably fairly forgettable in terms of the plot itself, but I'm enjoying the campiness and the kind of <laughs> referential aspect to it. And like the idea is like, a really cool bit where they, they were getting lost in the showroom and like Ikea's, I mean, we'll call it Ikea. Is, they reference Ikea in this and say this story's a knockoff of it. But like Ikea's, the pathway is, it's a maze. It's meant to make you get stuck in there and spend your money. <laughs> so I don't know, I really, I really enjoyed the kind of references in it, but it's not incredible. It's fun, it's fun. Anyways, I'm on Reading Spirits with my patrons now. I would like to get close to finishing this tonight because I don't think it's gonna take me long to finish it. If not, we'll finish it first thing in the morning. But I'm really enjoying this. Grady Hendrix likes to do something different and I appreciate that. Appreciate that's <laughs> that weird, okay, bye. Was I drinking, looking for the next thing? I couldn't really settle down. Always on the run, I didn't want to slow down. But baby, then you came around. Yeah, you came around. No, I Good 
morning. Hello. How are we doing? Physically on my chest. My, I have really sensitive skin just on my chest and I don't have to like scratch it and it goes red and I don't know why. And then it like takes like 10 years to come down. So anyways, <laughs> I finished Horror Store this morning and I enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it a 3.5 rounded up to a four on Goodreads. I'd say the halfway mark to the three quarter mark was like a five star section. It was intense horror. It was so good. The way the story kind of shifted all of a sudden and it got really dark and it got really dramatic and it got really over the top and I loved it. I really liked the end ending, but then that kind of like three quarter to end mark wasn't as strong for me. But I think this is fun, right? I don't think it's particularly memorable. I just love the uniqueness of it. I love the kind of like catalog. <laughs> idea of it and there's some extra elements in it that just make it so much fun. It's camp! It's camp! I don't know what to tell you! I don't think it's the best plotted story. Like I feel like, I don't know if I was saying this to you or to my patrons on the live last night, but I don't think I'm gonna remember the plot of this or the characters. I'm gonna remember just the unique aspect of it, which is basically what you know going into it, that it's set in an Ikea-esque store and it's kind of like a catalogue. That's what I'm gonna remember of it and kind of the way that it twisted the idea that we have of a place like this and twisted the idea of a haunted house. I enjoyed that aspect of it, but the plot itself wasn't incredible. I don't think it's probably Grady Hendrix best, but I'm glad that I've read it and I'm glad that I read it so quick after buying it. You know, this really is about the horror of working in, um, retail. <laughs> I never worked in retail. I worked in a lot of restaurants, well, two different restaurants when I was younger. Um, so that's like more hospitality, I guess. So I haven't worked in retail, but some of the people you meet in hospitality, dear God. And this was like giving me war flashbacks to my first job. My first job was horrible. <laughs> my second one was lovely. I worked in like a little cafe bistro kind of thing for the second one, but the first one was at one of my favorite restaurants. To this day, it's still pretty the place I go to on my birthday dinner, but the experience of working there and my boss, it was just, it was too much for little old Megan. It's like a steakhouse and you always had to carry three things. You always had to carry something in your hand, something on this like elbow or whatever, something in this hand. And one time he made me take a 16 ounce steak, a 16 ounce steak, a tray of like eight fries. And bear in mind, I'm quite weak upper bodied. I take my wrists. I have very small hands and quite weak wrists, <laughs> which also one of the fucking like creepy um, waiters. Bear in mind, I'm 16 and this is a grown man. And I'm like, oh God, it makes me want to throw up. <laughs> He's like, I, I said, oh, I really struggle because I, I have quite weak wrists. And he goes, that's not what I heard about Essex girls. So I didn't have a good experience working there. And it's just giving me like war flashbacks to <laughs> working there as a 16 year old. I don't know. But yeah, I would, I would recommend this. I think it's a fun time. I enjoyed the audiobook. I enjoyed reading it physically as well. It was fun. It was perfect for readathon. I feel like I've been pretty good with the books I've picked for this readathon. Like they've all been, you know, books that are fairly easy to get through, fairly easy to read. So we are now going to start Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. I'm very excited. This is like a five star prediction for me. I'm going to go make some dinner. No, not dinner, lunch. <laughs> but I did tell a bit of a lie there. I'm gonna make a cob salad, okay? A cob salad is kind of like an American thing, isn't it? But I had one on holiday when I was in Portugal and I loved it. It was so good. So I'm gonna go make one. The thing I'm nervous about is getting the ratios right. So I'm, I'm really excited though. So anyway, so let's go make a cob salad. <laughs> okay, I've got bacon on, I've got eggs cooking. <laughs> the thing that I'm worried about is the ratios because I'm not sure I have quite enough chicken. I only have like one, is that enough for two lunches? I'm trying to make two here. I don't have avocado, but I think I'm gonna add some red onion in because I do love red onion. So that's the plan. We'll see how this goes. I don't tend to make a lot of salads, guys. I have like one halloumi salad that's my go-to. <sighs> okay, <laughs> I don't know why I'm nervous. Okay, I'm also watching the reunion from season one of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I've watched the whole season after watching the most recent season and I'm obsessed. <laughs> Tom was watching it with me last night and he was like asking all the questions. <laughs> when I first put it on, I could see, he was like playing a game on his Switch and I could see his head kept like looking over. <laughs> like he was trying to pretend he wasn't watching it. But then he just started asking all these questions about who are these people. <laughs> but anyways, I'm gonna go watch the reunion and make my salad.
Okay, I'm on my phone, because my laptop's about to die. I'm worried I've made it too big. <laughs> but I'm gonna add some seasoning. I'm not gonna add the dressing until the end when I've uh, portioned them separately, because I don't want it tomorrow to get soggy. But let's add some salt and pepper, and then mix it. I feel like they're quite big salads, but I'm, I feel like they look really good. I'm gonna add some dressing now that I got. I'm not gonna add a lot, cause I'm not a big fan of dressing. I'll probably just add like a tablespoon, I think. I just had a bite. It's really good. I slapped. <laughs> okay, hi. I'm trying to get you to stand up on the bed. Okay, how are we doing? <laughs> I am, how many pages in am I? I'm 75 pages into Our Wives Under the Sea. And the overall problem we're having is just that I don't usually read every day. As we've seen, I had already had one day in this readathon where I didn't basically read anything. I mean, I've read 75, actually no, I've read like 100 pages today, which isn't bad, but I'm kind of like pushing through. And I don't want to do with that with this because this was a five star prediction. Like I said many times, I read it on that first chapter video I did at the start of the year where I was trying to choose my first book of the year. And I loved the first chapter of this and it gave me such a feeling and an emotion and a vibe. And I only didn't read it because it was against Legends and Lattes and that's like an impossible feat <laughs> to come up against. But I'm just not getting the same vibes from this today because I don't think I want to read. But then I'm like... I have to finish this before the readers on end so then I'm trying to like force myself through and then I'm getting stressed out about like is this the right moment should I really be reading this now am I doing the book a disservice am I doing me a disservice and I'm getting like stressed out so like what do I do <laughs> I think I'm just gonna have a bath and then read more tomorrow but basically I've told you everything you need to know it, the wife went on a deep sea mission in a submarine was lost and is now back home and she's like not speaking there's some weird stuff going on with her body and she's bleeding a lot from like her gums and nose and stuff and we're switching between perspectives of her recounting uh, her childhood but predominantly also when the submarine kind of went underwater and then her wife is telling us the present day story and is kind of the main voice of the story. I am enjoying it, but I'm just getting stressed out about not enjoying it as much as I could, you know? I think the writing's great. It's got this very claustrophobic, tight atmosphere to it. It's a horror because there's some weird shit going on and it's unsettling, but it's also about their love for each other and I think that's kind of beautiful. So anyways, I'm gonna have a bath. I'm I might check in with you again tonight if I read loads more, but probably I'll see you in the morning with some more thoughts and hopefully I'll be more into it then because I'm getting a bit panicked. <laughs> okay, it's the last day of summer ween. <laughs> we've got to hurry up because <laughs> we've got two books to finish. I didn't read any more of Our Wives Under the Sea last night and we've got to finish Her Body and Other Parties. I'm not even going to film any B-roll today because that like takes up an extra element in my brain. We just need to read and read and read and read and read because it's already like... I checked as if I ever watch. <laughs> it's already like half three. So we've got to get to reading. I'm going to try and finish Our Wives Under the Sea first and hopefully love it more than I was yesterday. So that's the aim of the game. So I will see you once I've read a bit more of that. Please hope and pray for me. Send good vibes because I'm... Gosh, we've got to get this done. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. I, 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 <laughs> I don't know how I'm feeling about this, okay? And that's not me saying I don't know what it's trying to do. I now get what we're trying to do. I now get the vibe. Like, I get what we're trying to go for here. But I just don't know how I feel about it. And I don't, um, by that, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to give it a five star or a two. <laughs> it could be anything still. I really haven't made my mind up on what I think about it. I'm also finding it incredibly hard to talk to you about because A, it's a pretty short book and I'm doing three check-ins. I'm 150 pages in, so this will just be a short check-in to say, I don't know what the fuck I think of this book. It's eerie, it's slow, it's intimate, it's romantic, it's beautiful, but it's ugly, it's many things. I just, I don't, I, I have no opinion on it. It's not like I have no opinion. I feel like I have too many conflicting opinions in my head that they're all just drowning each other out and I have nothing for you. <laughs> so I really, 
I was going to say I really like the writing, but then I was like, is that the truth? I don't know. <laughs> I could, I, do I hate it? Do I like it? Do I love it? I don't know. Yeah, love. I don't know if I know what love is. I think I just need to go finish it because I don't know where me and this book are at right now. Things could change. It could get a two, it could get a five. I generally feel like that is still all the possibility. So I'm gonna go finish it. I don't think it's gonna get a five though, but it could. <laughs> I'm not ruling anything out. I do, I am feeling an overwhelming sense of guilt that I have not read this. This wasn't the perfect time to read this book and I've scuppered it and I've ruined it. But that in itself is ruining the reading experience. I said this to you before and it's just, you need to calm down. <laughs> Anyways, let's go finish it and then I will have an opinion, whatever this is, hopefully. So last night I finished both Her Body Down the Parties and Our Wives Under the Sea. We'll talk about this first because I finished this first. I just came over and feeling not very well last night and I just didn't want to film. I was like, no one can see me. <laughs> this book is so difficult to talk about. I'm ending up giving this a four. I did really enjoy it. I feel like it's such, it's such a strange reading experience to me. It was kind of like straining against letting me in. Do you know what I mean? I was like, let me in, let me in. And the book was like, no. And then I feel like I kind of like, I don't know, pierced the fold. <laughs> it was getting weird. In the last third and really got into it and got into the beauty of it and got into the atmosphere of it and everything just came together. I do think this is a book that not everyone is gonna love, but I do think it's something that's a very unique and something that's very special. And so I am hesitant to recommend this because I think some people will go into a thinking they're gonna love it and then not love it. But I enjoyed it. I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. And we had a bit of push and pull throughout the whole book. You know, me wanting to fully connect and get past a little bit of a barrier that I feel like the book had put up. And then kind of finally in that last third, I feel like I kind of got into it. But it's strange, it's weird. You're not gonna get easy answers from this book, but I think it was beautiful. And I really, really enjoyed it. Now, this one. <laughs> Let me get my phone actually, because when I last checked in with you in the last vlog, I'd read the first four short stories. Then last night I read the second four. And it's really difficult to talk about because I gave the first two of those last four, both five stars basically. One was maybe a 4.5. And then the last two were both threes verging on 2.5s for me. So this book and me have been all over the place. Let me add up all of the ratings. So it's five, four, three, five, four point five, five, three. Okay. Let me try and add all these up and see what the average rating is. Divide that by eight. Okay, exactly four. <laughs> exactly four is what my average rating of all the short stories is. So I'm gonna give this a four star. There were quite a few short stories in this that I loved, but then a few that I found boring and didn't work for me. What I said at the start of uh, reading this in the first Summerween vlog still stands. I think Carmen Maria Machado is one of the greatest writers in terms of like craft and I feel like I fully I'm not fully there like I can't fully get it because like her brain is like above mine I think that the way that this blends ideas is really interesting and amazing and actually one of the short stories really reminded me of Our Wives Under the Sea and then one of them really reminded me of the writing retreat another one was like this art retreat but yeah I'm really excited to read In the Dream House I know that's going to be a difficult read but I'm still excited to read it after reading this and again, this is one I'd be tentative to recommend because I think it's like a lot and like you have to pay attention reading it. It's not an easy read. I feel like I've also read a lot of depressing reads in some of you guys. <laughs> These two in particular are just kind of like both sad in a lot of ways. And I just feel like I need to read something happy next or something fun is what I'm feeling like. So let's have a look at all the books I read in Summerween. Let me rank them actually in terms of enjoyment. Give me a moment. So the good thing about Summerween is that I didn't have anything below a 3.5. So that's pretty good. So these are both 3.5s here at the bottom. Then we have four, 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 five. <laughs> but that is what I would say my ranking is of all the books that I read. I just put our wives under the seat at the bottom of the fours because I did have that kind of resistance with it. Fangs doesn't have, I don't think has as much substance as these fours, you know what I mean? It's just like a graphic novel, but it was fun and cute, you know what I mean? And then The Writing Retreat, the first book I read of Summerween is still the standout for me. Nothing. <laughs> it's gotta get a sip of water.
Nothing topped it for me. I get that it's not going to be everyone's thing, but I just loved it. I thought it was so good. <laughs> I thought it was so much fun. Oh, it's crazy, but I loved it. And a lot of people have said to me that the last word by Ted Adams is crazy on a similar level. So I'm going to wait a little while to read that. I, I, I can't have too much crazy at once. So there we have it, everyone. That is the end of Summerween. I hope those of you who participated in Summerween had a great time. I had a great time. I feel like reading eight things, because I read the Edgar Allan Poe short story as well, eight things in seven days is pretty great. Pretty great. So I'm really happy. I feel like I'm going to take like three days off of reading now and start again on Monday with reading, because my brain is kind of like, uh. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to end the video, comment a pumpkin or a ghost emoji. We did those for the previous two vlogs. So comment a pumpkin or a ghost emoji if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!